I'm going to talk about the tool called page reference, which allows you to get um, a, a web address or an embed code for any Genially uh, page. So normally you don't get individual addresses for each of your slides in a Genially. You just get the one address for your whole, whole presentation, which makes it difficult if you want to link to just a specific slide from outside uh, Genially or from something that you've embedded. Obviously, if you're inside the Genially, you can just use um, the link here. So I just put a link and then I can go to a certain page. But it doesn't work if, for example, you want to add a Google form as a lock um, or a learning apps activity, which I'll show you in a minute. But actually with this tool, it's super easy to get um, either the reference number, the slide URL or the slide embed code. So, so all I need to do is from this template, I copy this red box. I go into the slide uh, that I want. So let's go with the raccoon here. I just put it in there. And when I go into preview mode, it will then show me the address. So I can copy this and let's just try it out. If I put this in my address bar, it will take me straight to that page. But uh, now that I've copied it, I can just get rid of that red box again because I don't want it on my page. And the same with the embed code. So just take this, put it on my page. In preview mode, I can copy it. And now the great thing is I can embed a Genially page in another Genially page. So if I go have a new page, I go to insert um, and I paste it here in others. So I go to insert. And now I've got that little raccoon as an embedded item in my Genially slide. So this might be useful if you're using um, a tool like the, the Notepad where you want students to use the same tool over several slides. So you could have this here on your slide and then they go through the activities on that embedded slide there because they can actually use it and they can go through all the pages of that embedded uh, Genially there. Um, but because I've got the embed code from that page with the raccoon, this will be the first one they start with. So obviously if I get rid of the arrows by changing the navigation settings, then they would only get that one page if that's what I want. Okay, so here's another example how I could use it. I go to this slide with a Google form in it. So. Um, I really like using Google Forms as a lock to my escape room because they are easy to make and um, the students have to put in exactly the right answer to get to the next bit. So here my question is, what is the capital of France? So I put in Paris. Obviously you could also say, what is the code number for this lock? Then I click next and now they get the link to the next presentation and to the exact slide that I want them to be on. So in this case, it's this overview slide there. So how you make this is um, you will need to have a Google account um, and in your address bar, you type in form forms.new. That's all you need to type. It will then take you to a new Google account, uh, your, into your Google account, into this form maker. And then I can put in what my question is, what is the code? I want to have it um, as a short answer. And here's the important part. So it needs to be required, which means they have to give an answer. And you go into those three dots to response validation, which means it has to be a specific answer. So in this case, um, well, not go with regular expression. And then it doesn't matter if it's a text or a number. And it needs to match. Um, and let's say our code is 1234. I can give a little error uh, message, so something like uh, needs four digits. So this will come up if the students get it wrong and it will help them a little bit to narrow down the mistake. So it's good to put in, for example, if it needs capital letters as well. So now I need to add another section, which means only if they answer the question in the first section will they get to the next section. So here I can write uh, well done and then paste in um, my link to the page that I want them to go on. 
Then I go to send and find the embed code, which is in there. So I copy this, go back to my Genially presentation, and then we can go to insert others, paste our embed code in there and insert it. And now my Google form is in here. And if I take away the navigation buttons, then the only way for the students to get to the next page would be by filling this in and finding the link. Another great activity you can use is learning apps. And I'll show you a little example here in the preview. So this one is one of many learning apps you can use. Uh, this is just a simple match up. So if I match up one plus one with two and two plus two with four, and then I will get my feedback here, which just gives me the link to the next slide. So if the arrows were in there, this is the only way to get there. So it's a great way of adding out an activity that the students need to complete before they can move on to the next task. So you can find these on learningapps.org, create your activity, um, then add the um, URL in the feedback box. And then once you've saved your app, you get a, an embed code, which you can then add into your Genially presentation.